Uh, good evening. Uh, welcome back to Tuesday Night Bible Study. We are still in Acts chapter 5. Uh, tonight's title will be God Knows the Heart, Acts chapter 5, part 3. As we get into, uh, and we'll finish this chapter up tonight, this has actually been a long chapter. Let's do a little review. We talked first in the first part of Acts chapter 5, we, we seen the fate of Annas and Sapphira when they lied to the Holy Spirit. We seen how the church is growing, how members at this point in time were, people were selling their stuff to aid the church for its growth so it would continually grow. We also see in the second part of God Knows the Heart, uh, part two, the imprisonment and release of Peter and John. And uh, we see here how they were released and they, uh, the angel actually uh, released them. They went and told them to go preach we seen that, and uh, we seen how <coughs> the the council of, of of the Pharisees and Sadducees look was looking for him, and it was reported back to them that these men that were supposedly in prison were back in the synagogue preaching about Jesus. So tonight we're going to pick back up here. Uh, we're going to see this man. His name's Gamiels. He it's his council, and we're going to see what all. Is transpired up to this point, up to this, uh, up to this uh, timeline here. We know that uh, Gamiel told them to everybody to hold up, let the men uh, step outside, so the so these the, so the council could actually discuss these men. So let's let's get back into it here. Acts chapter five, verse. 33 is where we'll be starting back, okay? Give me just one second here. With you one more second. We'll find out, and if we we do a little, I've done a little research on this man, this Gamiel. He was a doctor of the law. In other words, he knew the law inside and out. He knew, he, he had a reputation among all the people too. Uh, he was a very important Jewish rabbi, okay? And uh, he, uh, he was very important and, and everyone would listen to him. Uh, and we'll see where this man actually comes up again in chapter 22. So let's get started on this. Verse 33. But when they heard this, they were cut to the quick and intended to kill them. So we've seen here where these men were so upset after they were told that these men were preaching again that they were so upset that they wanted to kill them. But, verse 34, but a Pharisee named Gamiel, we see here he's a teacher of the law, respected by all the people, stood up in the council and gave orders to put the men outside for a short time. In other words, this man says, all right, before we put these men to death, let these men step outside and let's discuss this. And like I said, we'll see this, this Gamiel, we'll see that he comes up again here shortly, coming up in, I think, around chapter 22. Anyway, he's a very well-liked uh, rabbi, and he knows the law really well, okay? So he tells them, he says, look, let's put them outside. Let's, let's discuss this as a council. Verse 35. And he said to them, men of Israel, 
take care what you propose to do with these men. So what do you think he meant by that? Well, in other words, take heed on what we decide to do with these men. Why would this council say that? I mean, really, why, why, would, they, why would they say that? Well, let's go on. He, he explains it here. Uh, he says right here in verse 36, For some time ago, Thaddeus rose up claiming to be somebody. A group of about 400 men joined up with him. But he was killed, and all who followed him were dispersed, and it came to nothing. In other words, he said, look here. There was a man once named Thaddeus. He rose up, claiming to be somebody. And he had a group of men, around 400. But when he was killed, these men dispersed. In other words, it came to be nothing. What's he saying here? Well, he's saying to these men, look, these men don't, these men, this will all stop. This, this will, it'll disappear. Guys, this was over 2,000 years ago, and Jesus Christ is as strong today, the preaching about him is today, as it was the day these men were preaching and putting their life on the line. All right, let's go on. He says in verse 37 here, After this man, Judas a Galilean, rose up in the days of the census and drew away some people after him. But he too perished. And all those who followed him were scattered. In other words, I have give you now two examples of two different men that this has happened to. But Gamiel doesn't realize here that Jesus Christ died on a cross, rose again the third day. He spent 40 days with these disciples. He ate with them. He, uh, he sat on the beach with them around campfires. I mean... The Bible says that he appeared to over 500 men at one time when he ascended back into the, to be with the Father, okay? So there was many eyewitness accounts, and these disciples, these two right here especially, they witnessed this. They witnessed him down across. They witnessed him raising in the third day. They walked and talked with him for 40 days after his ascension, and they watched Jesus Christ himself ascend into the heavens. So there was nothing these men could do to stop this men, these men because unlike these other two situations, these two men were killed. Think about this. And all, everything died down. But folks, the church is getting ready to explode. There's already been, over, there's already been several thousand men saved here. And the church is going to continue to grow and explode. Okay. So he gives them two examples here. So in other words, look guys, everything's going to be okay. Just you're, 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 you're panicking, you're freaking out over nothing. That's what Gamiel's telling them here, okay? So verse 38. So in the present case, I say to you, stay away from these men and let them alone. For if this plan or action is of men, it will be overthrown. Let me read this scripture again and listen to exactly what this man said. So in this present case, in other words, I'm talking about these two men that you all are wanting to kill. I say to you, stay away from these men and let them alone. He says right here, for if this plan or action is of men, like the other two cases, it will be overthrown. Well, guess what? It wasn't overthrown. And we see that as the church grows. 
But what Gamiel's saying here, look, he says, is, is if, if this is just like the other two cases, don't worry about it. It's going to blow over. It's going to blow over. Verse 39, listen to this one. But if it is of God, you will not be able to overthrow them or else you may even be found fighting against God. So he's saying right here, if if this is just of the men, this is just a little a little uprising, it'll 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 blow over. But if it's not, you're not going to stop it. No matter what you do, you're not going to stop this because trying you're going to be fighting against God and of course that's what they wind up doing. All right. So verse 40. So in other words here they took his advice. In other words, they've listened to him at this point in time, okay? So they have agreed. And after calling the apostles in, they flogged them and order them not to speak in the name of Jesus and then release them. So what does that mean? They called them in and they flogged them. It means they whipped them. It means they beat them. They could have killed them, folks. But they did, they did take, the Bible says they flogged them. That's, that's a type of, of, of beating. And then they ordered them again, we can see here, not to speak in this name of Jesus. And then released them. So, what do you think these men did? You think they just went home and said, eh, we won't do that no more. No, these men did not. Because they knew they had seen Christ. They know there's a risen, living Christ. And they continued to pursue, preach, and teach, and tell others about it. And as a Christian, that is our job, that's our duty, to teach and preach and tell others about the Lord. And all of us don't have to be preachers. All of us don't have to be teachers. But as, a, as the body of Christ, as a Christian, our job is to get out and teach and tell others. And folks, we're running out of time. Uh, we're in the last days. I mean, any day now the church can be raptured. And people, you need to realize we got, I know I've got lost loved ones. I'm sure each and every one of you, it's hearing my voice today, there's someone that's lost. You may be even be lost. And if you need prayer, please text me and and I'll definitely pray for you. I'll pray, I'll pray with you. Uh, but we need to be ready because, and we need to try to get as many ready because I'm going to tell you, folks, what you see going on in this world, trust me, if you know Bible prophecy and you know Bible scripture, Satan is preparing his people for the Antichrist. God is, is, God is trying to prepare us, the Christian people, for the rapture. You see all this chaos going on right now. There's all kinds of it. There's all kinds of chaos going on right now. And you see it. And I'm going to give you a little, a little, uh, a little bit of a political agenda here. And I'm not a political person. I try not to get political when it comes to uh, Democrat, Republican, this, that, and the other. But I'm going to tell you, and hopefully in a little bit I'll have a lesson on this. But there, there, in the last days, there are five main political agendas of the Antichrist. Now tell me today if these five might be open your eyes or ring a bell here. A one world leader. Can you see that coming? A one world government. Trust me, it's coming. 
a one world religion. Can you see that coming? A one world monetary system. Folks are already talking about a cashless society. A one world military power. Why do you think they want to abolish the police? Folks, I am a firm believer the Antichrist is here and he's behind the scenes right now and he's setting his earthly kingdom up. The only thing that's stopping him, and this is biblical, is the church. The church has to be raptured before the Antichrist can come to power. Why is that? Because the Holy Spirit has to leave here. Who is filled with the Holy Spirit? The church. Who's the church? The people. Okay, so you can see these one world order, one world government, one world religion, one world monetary system, and one world military power. Folks, when you see things going on today as a Christian, you go, wow, how is that? How can that? Think about it. This United States has got to radically change because it's got to prepare for that one world leader, which is going to be the Antichrist. And yes, he is going to rule the world for seven years. Okay, back on subject here now. So, verse 41. So they went on their way from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they had been considered worthy to suffer shame for his name. Think about that a minute. Why would they consider it worthy to suffer shame for his name? If you remember back, when Jesus was here with his disciples, he told them. He even, he even told them. If you remember when I taught you about, back we talked about the disciples and how they would die. Jesus warned them. He warned them. He said, you will suffer and some of you will die for my name's sake. So in other words, these men remembered that conversation and they realized here that they were in God's will because they had suffered for his namesake, folks. Think about that a minute. The last verse, and I knew tonight's would be a little shorter. Verse 42, And every day in the temple and from house to house they kept right on teaching and preaching Jesus as the Christ. Folks, this did not stop them. This did not slow them down. And folks, I'm telling you, we need to open our eyes as a church and we need to realize we're in the last days. We need to realize there's going to be a total transformation of this country. We see it before our eyes right now. We want to blame a political party, and that's fine. Do I think one political party is being used by Satan more than the other? Absolutely. I can see it. I can show it to you in Scripture. But, folks, we as, as church members, we've got to be out and about. Excuse me. We've got to be out and about doing God's business. To serve, and like I said, everybody don't have to be a teacher or a preacher. We need to be in church. We need to be serving. Can I see right now a great falling away? Absolutely. Look what COVID's done. There's a lot of churches, folks, that's not even opened back up. Prior to that, there's a lot of churches around here that don't even have Sunday school. And I don't know how new, how new Christians are taught without a teaching service. You've got to have a teaching service and a preaching service, folks, because every preaching service does not. Sometimes it's not for you as a Christian. We've got to have teaching services and we've got to have preaching services. And again, I'm a member of Esterville Community Church. If anyone would, uh, would like to come out, you will be very much welcome there. Uh, we have teaching services. We have Sunday school, 10:15 every Sunday morning. And we have 
uh, preaching service at 1115 every Sunday morning. Every, uh, you're welcome to come out and worship with us. Uh, folks, if, not, if, you're not in, if you're not involved in a church, get in a church. Folks, if, if you're not saved, Lord have mercy. That's one of the most important things you can ever do, guys. And there's three things you must do to become saved, okay? Number one, you've got to admit your sin. You've got to admit that you're a sinful individual, and you've got to confess them sins to the Jesus Christ. Secondly, you've got to believe in Jesus Christ. You've got to believe who he was, who he said he was, he died on the cross, he rose again the third day, and he rose victor victorious over death, hell, and the grave. And you have to, number three, you have to make a commitment to Jesus by faith. So uh, if, you, if you're interested in that, please give me a, uh, please message me, let me know, and I will be more than happy to uh, to pray with you. And if anybody has any prayers out there, prayer requests they would like to uh, to bring up, I'd be more happy to pray for them. I appreciate everybody. I appreciate the time. I know there's a lot you could be doing, but I appreciate the time you uh, sign on and uh, actually uh, listen to the messages. I will promise you one thing. I stay in the Bible. Uh, if I give you opinion on something, I'll let you know it's my personal opinion. But I stay in Scripture. Uh, if everyone would, I would appreciate it if you would like and share so God's Word gets out there. Everyone have a wonderful evening. May God bless you. And I'll hopefully we'll catch you back on here next Tuesday night. Thank you.